Jamie and everyone else too. Thanks for having me on today. Um, so yeah, I can start with the, the quick backstory of the giving block. Does that work, Jordan? Cool. So the, uh, the quick backstory of how the giving block started. Um, essentially, I was a management consultant, got into crypto trading and investing. And in 2017, started noticing that as crypto prices went up and the market got bigger and bigger, uh, people were increasingly trying to donate Bitcoin in other cryptocurrencies, but they couldn't find nonprofits that really knew how to accept the donations. So there were donors posting on Twitter, on Facebook, on Reddit, everywhere saying, I want to donate, but I can't find charities that know how to accept it. Um, I happened to have a really good friend from college who was working at a nonprofit at the time, got him into crypto trading as well. And we started to think, you know, how can we make this easier for nonprofits to be able to accept crypto donations? And in, in 2019, or rather 2018, we joined forces to, to create the giving block. And, you know, fast forward to now, and, you know, we're working with hundreds of organizations and raising millions of dollars in crypto donations. Awesome. Thank you for uh, starting that out, kicking that off for us. Um, now, next question, kind of, what are you currently working on? And have you had any recent events that have impacted this? Kind of, what are your next steps with the giving block? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for us is, you know, we want this to be something that becomes commonplace for nonprofits, right? We think this will follow similar sort of technology adoption curves with nonprofits. If you think back to even, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, not every nonprofit necessarily even took credit card donations, right? It took a while. Uh, it'll take a while with crypto too. So we're going to keep pushing more and more nonprofits to accept crypto donations. And hopefully in the next, you know, let's say five years, uh, probably I would say probably the majority will be accepting crypto by then. Um, and in general, you know, on the donor side as well, we're working pretty hard to educate donors that donating crypto is even a thing, right? <laughs> um, so we're trying to create this culture of giving within the crypto community, working with crypto companies, for example, you know, actually integrating donation products into, for example, cryptocurrency exchanges, wallets, tax software, so when you're using your crypto, you're going to be reminded that you should donate crypto. It would be like if you were in a, you know, in your Fidelity or Schwab account trading stocks and got a prompt like, hey, did you know you can donate your stocks directly to hundreds of nonprofits? That's the kind of ecosystem we're trying to build within crypto. And is there a benefit to donating crypto versus um, just normal American dollars? Yeah. So um, the biggest benefit is the tax component. So if you've donated stocks before, it's the exact same thing for you as the donor and for the nonprofit even, very similar, um, in the sense that as a donor, you don't have to pay capital gains taxes on the appreciated crypto that you donate, and you get a fair market value deduction on your tax return. Plus, as long as you're donating to a registered charity, they're not paying taxes on it either. So it's really a win-win for both sides, and you can think about it as donating pre-tax dollars, essentially. So that can be you know, 30% better for you and 30% better for the nonprofit, you know, depending a little bit on, on which tax bracket you're in. Awesome. And do you want to just name some of the nonprofits you're working with so far? And I, I know since I follow you on Twitter, I saw that you recently added some new uh, tokens onto your platform that are you're able to work with. So if you want to name some of those as well. Yeah. So in terms of the types of nonprofits we work with, it's a huge variety, a huge range. It's everything from your, let's say your local YMCA chapter up until, you know, the really big national and international brands like Save the Children, American Cancer Society, United Way Worldwide, even more and more universities getting set up with us too. Um, but really it's, it's all types of, of nonprofits and all sizes really. Um, when it comes to the, the second part of the question, different cryptocurrencies, um, so right now we have support for about 20 different cryptocurrencies um, but the majority of donations are being done in Bitcoin and Ethereum, but we've also got support for other tokens like BAT or Curve or Sushi and Uniswap. Um, the main reason we keep adding new tokens is, you know, converting from one token to another in a lot of places, including the U.S. is a taxable event. So you want to give donors a bit of flexibility in terms of which cryptos they can donate. Awesome. And you mentioned worldwide. So you do have clients that are outside the United States. Yep. So the majority of our clients are in the U.S., but we've started to grow internationally, too. We've got clients in Canada, uh, New Zealand, Australia, the U.K., Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, um, 
couple other places I'm probably missing, but it's it's growing pretty internationally. <laughs> awesome. And I know you just moved to the Rhode Island area. So how can the Rhode Island community help you? Are there any people listening to this call that can help you with something in, in particular? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've only been in Rhode Island for, I guess, five or six months now. Uh, loving it so far, though. And in general, you know, want to start to meet both the nonprofit community here and also the crypto community, right? So we're trying to bridge the gap. So I need to make sure I'm meeting people on both sides. But, you know, if you're a nonprofit listening, we'd love to get you set up to accept crypto. And if you are someone who has crypto listening, you know, we'd love to make it easier for you to, to find a cause that resonates with you so you can support them in a more tax efficient way. Awesome. And what is your goal for the giving block in the next five years? I mean, five years, it's seeing, you know, pretty much all nonprofits, or at least the majority, accepting crypto donations. That's the, the longer term goal for us, right? We want this to be just as common as it is to, to see a credit card donation option on the nonprofit's website. And, you know, we, we know that's not going to change overnight or happen overnight. And maybe it takes longer than five years, but that's sort of our, you know, our longer term roadmap. And how many team members do you have right now and where are they mostly located? Yeah, so we're growing really quickly. Um, there's almost 25 of us now, I think so. Um, super distributed though. I'm the only one in Rhode Island right now. We've got people in New York and Washington, DC and Florida, California, Texas. Uh, we've got even a developer in Brazil and Finland and Spain. I mean, all over the place. Um, so for us, you know, it's a really global team. And, and part of that is the nature of the business still. Awesome. All right. And <clears throat> I'm going to share a couple links. If you want to follow Alex on Twitter or LinkedIn, I will throw those in the chat right now. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, for yes, Alex? Jordan, I have a question. Yes, sir. Hi, Alex. I'm the chair and former chair of several major nonprofits in Rhode Island, including public television, the hospital board, library, children's museum, also the treasurer of a private boarding school in Connecticut. Usually when we take a donation, for instance, stock, as you know, it's DTC to the account of the nonprofit. Could you just explain a little bit how uh, the coin would work being given to a nonprofit and how that would be converted to cash and how you get paid for facilitating it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's very similar to how it works with the stock on the back end, but a little bit, um, I guess, easier in a sense. So the way it works is when we onboard a nonprofit, we set you up with a cryptocurrency exchange account, similar to how you would have, let's say a brokerage account with Fidelity, right. To accept stock donations. That's part of the onboarding process. And then on top of that, we've got things like a donation widget that make it really easy for the donor in a very automated way to transfer over that crypto. Um, and, and for you all as a nonprofit on the back end, you have the option of having all those crypto donations that come into your account automatically converted into US dollars. So you don't need to worry about the volatility or even think about it. You just tell us, I want everything converted. Everything will be converted for whatever the current market price is when it comes in. And one thing that's a bit different with crypto than with stocks is, you know, the market is 24 um, seven. So even if you get a donation at 2 a.m., it's still gonna be converted for whatever the market price is. In the morning, you'll see the US dollar balance in your account and it can be withdrawn to your, your bank account then and, and used like it normally would be. Um, when it comes to the, the business model, your, your second part of the question, we've set this up as a, a very sort of traditional fundraising platform model in the sense that we have different packages you can choose from which has different annual fees and different transaction fees. The one thing to keep in mind with our product and services is it's really three different things. There's the first component, which is really the technical infrastructure to be able to accept the crypto donations. Things like the crypto exchange account on the back end, donation widget, that kind of stuff. Second piece being the actual fundraising platform. The fundraising platform is actually how we're getting you in front of donors and helping you get found by the crypto community. Right now that's driving about 80% of the donation volume versus the donation widget we put on your website. The third piece that we do is more around the fundraising and marketing support, um, where we always joke, we don't want any of our clients to write Bitcoin as two words on your website because you might scare away the donors. <laughs> we help you with the crypto lingo, the crypto slang, how to market it, how to talk about it, um, so that you, you come off as if you know crypto really well. Um, so there's, there's different price points, basically, depending on how much of those three different components you want. 
So it's similar to what MasterCard or Visa may charge if you charge it on your card. The other question is that uh, how how does one get the reporting end of it? If you trade through Fidelity and you gift it, Fidelity will send you the the 1099 or the documents to back up what the trade was. Yep. So we would have similar type of, of reporting where, you know, line by line, it would say, you know, this donor name, email address sent half a Bitcoin at this time. And it was converted for, you know, $15,000 and three cents or whatever it is, right? <laughs> you'd have all that reporting line by line and everything you need. So then you'd be able to report it yourself on the 5610 form or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, we had a situation with a private boarding school I'm actually trustee and treasurer of that a alumnus gave us one and a half million dollars worth of stock. We DTC'd it to JP Morgan and they held it for two days and the value went down 200,000. So it's good to know that it could be converted pretty quickly. And I'd be happy to meet with you and direct you to either the nonprofits boards that I've been on and maybe who to talk to about setting it up. Yeah, that would be awesome. We'd be happy to help. And, and yeah, like you said, the conversion is essentially automatic. It's it's within minutes of the donor clicking send on their end. <laughs> That's awesome. So hopefully, like, I mean, I know blockchain or cryptocurrency has moved quickly, but that's that's really amazing that you can kind of get that set up that quickly. Um, Any so, other questions for Alex? Oh, sorry, Amy. No, it's okay. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Is and if you do want to see Alex in person, um, he will be at District Hall on July 28th. Um, Amy just threw that link in the chat. Um, we have a little networking event, um, blockchain meetup. So if you'd like to see him in person, feel free to stop by next week. Absolutely. And that meetup is in partnership with our friends at um, Ocean and uh, tech collective. And so we're really looking forward to kind of engaging with that wider tech community in addition to the nonprofits and um, others in the, in the area who might be interested in learning more about how to kind of engage with blockchain and nonprofit giving or with cryptocurrency and nonprofit giving. As you can tell, my grasp of the language is not as good as Jordan and Alex's. So I will not be speaking, but um, for those of you who are on today, thank you so much for joining us.